What's going on everybody? I'm Anthony A. Perez from a YouTube channel called Anthony A. Perez and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Blog, and today we're going to talk about Venom in video games, uh, which is very cool because, you know, we have obviously the Insomniac Spider-Man 2 game coming up, and we're going to get a version of Venom. I believe it's going to be like a Harry Osborn version. Hopefully Eddie Brock still shows up. They teased him in the first one, kind of like an Easter egg, um, but I think they're going to go with a more personal story with Venom, with, uh, you know, ha having him connected to uh, his, you know, Peter Parker's childhood friend, Harry Osborn. So it looks like they're probably going to go in that direction with that one, but we don't know. Surprises still could happen. Uh, but for, you know, outside of that, we were like, well, we kind of want an Eddie Brock, you know, video game or character in a video game, Eddie Brock Venom. And, uh, and sure, there's some mobile games out there where you can get that. Certainly Marvel Future Fight is a game I've played, uh, and that has, uh, you know, Venom in it, and you can get different costumes for Venom. That's currently something you can download on your phone right now if you just want, like, a cool button masher thing. Uh, just be careful if you're susceptible to microtransactions. I've put in a few dollars for sure on that game, um, but I, I like it, and, you know, I like supporting stuff that I like when I have the money to do it, which isn't often, but back when I played that game, definitely. Uh, but I logged into it recently, and played it a little uh, for Halloween just for old time's sake and it was fun uh, there's also Marvel Snap which is a card game that just came out and that has Venom in there um, there's also uh, you know other games like Puzzle Quest and stuff that you know you can get Venom in um, so yeah there's a lot of stuff out there but I think we just were like yeah console game or PC game something where we can play as Eddie Brock Venom and we got excited with Midnight Suns because obviously they showed Venom when they revealed that Spider-Man was a playable character in the game and they showed Venom in it, and he was corrupted by Lilith and kind of demonized in a way. And now he's under her control, and he'll be in that game. Well, what was really neat they did on social media recently was for Midnight Suns, they had Deadpool, the character, take over their account and kind of, you know, run it for a while. And he said, you know what? I want to be in this game. <laughs> Deadpool's basically voiced by Nolan North, which was great because I've been playing the, you know, Deadpool game again recently after they announced Hugh Jackman was going to be in the new movie. And I got excited and I was like, yeah, you know what, let's go back and play that console game on the Xbox again, the old one that I had downloaded to the system. And I had fun playing it and I love hearing Nolan, North, uh, Nolan North's voice uh, as Deadpool. He does a great job. What the hell is a Moon Knight? So hearing him again as Midnight's in Midnight Suns and him saying like, hey, I'm going to campaign. I took over their social media accounts and I'm going to campaign for me to be put into the game. Because obviously there's still one more character that has been unannounced that we could play as in the game. So I was like, okay, this is their way of revealing that it's going to be Deadpool. You know, that didn't really excite me too much. I love the character. I love Nolan North and stuff. But I was like, ah, I, I, that's fine that he's going to be in the game. But I was kind of hoping the 13th character would be someone more like a Moon Knight or, you know, or someone like that, like so, so, or Morbius, someone more connected to, uh, to the universe of Midnight Suns. Because there's already a lot of characters like from Avengers and X-Men that aren't Midnight Suns members that are already in the game. So I was kind of like, all right, I, I like this, but I also don't on some level. Well, what they did I thought was really clever. Uh, so Deadpool took over their social media and started leaking stuff. And he's like, hey, here's some leaks for you guys. Uh, and he showed a picture of Storm on the first day. And I'm like, oh, okay, I love Storm. That's great. What does that mean? What, I mean, what is, so she's going to be in the game? Okay, I figured since Wolverine and Magic are in the game, they're X-Men characters, we'll probably get some other characters in the background. So I'm like, okay, you know, Magic's there. Uh, I mean, Storm's there. That's cool. And then the next day he revealed Venom. And with the, the black and gold and stuff. And I go, okay, well, he looks like he's part of the Midnight Suns in this drawing. But that can't be, because then that means Deadpool is revealing and leaking playable characters. But there's only one more playable character. Are they saying there's more than one more playable character? So then I started getting excited, and he revealed a picture of Eddie Brock's face. He's like, hey, here's another leak, Eddie Brock's face. Um, then the third day was Morbius, and they actually used a hashtag, it's Morbin time, which I kind of love that that's a thing. It's probably the most popular thing about that movie is the freaking memes and hashtags uh, way more popular and way more enjoyed than the actual movie, I think, for a lot of people. Um, but uh, but then also on the fourth day, they revealed, they did a live stream and they talked about the DLC and they said, look, Deadpool is actually, you know, he took over our social media, whatever, he can't ping for himself, so we're going to give him his wish. Deadpool's in the game along with Storm, Venom, and Morbius. And they are going to be part of the first DLC packet that comes out and those characters actually will be playable in the main campaign. So if you buy the Legendary Edition of the game, then you'll get the Season Pass, which will include all these characters, which are going to come out in early 2023. 
And they said in the live stream, they said, you know, if you're playing through the game, but you don't beat it before the DLC comes out, and then you get the DLC, wherever you are in the story, those characters will integrate into your story. Um, or if you've already beaten the game, you can start a new game and have those characters in it with you. There is a point, though, that they'll be unlocked, because I guess Venom is a part of the story. He gets corrupted, as we saw in the trailers with Spider-Man. He gets corrupted, and he's a boss fight. But then after that, his DLC story begins. So you can bring him onto the team, and he's now on a redemption arc, because he is an anti-hero, but he's not out to hurt people. You know, he just wants to hurt Spider-Man. But now that he's been corrupted and used for Lilith's purposes, he now wants to exact revenge, in a way, against Lilith. So now you can build a, a redemption arc for Eddie Brock Venom. So that is really awesome. Uh, so unfortunately, it's something we're going to have to wait for for the DLC. But the fact that it's coming is so great. So that means we actually get a story with Eddie Brock as Venom in a video game. And it's something we haven't really seen before, where he's corrupted by a demon and then now wants to get revenge on Lilith, who's a character that I don't believe he's ever even interacted with in the comic books before. So really, really cool. And then we got Morbius there too, and Storm and Deadpool are now the new, uh, you know, playable characters with the first DLC. And there are more DLCs coming, so there will be other characters. So I'm hoping that means for everyone out there that's campaigning for Punisher and Moon Knight and stuff, whether we get them as the reveal of the final character, um, you know, if we don't, I hope that means they'll be in a DLC in the future. Uh, so yeah, what do you think of this news? I really want to hear your thoughts on this, because obviously I'm very excited. I'm going to get to play as Eddie Brock Venom in a game that has Ghost Rider, Blade, Morbius, and all these other great characters, hopefully Moon Knight, um, Venom, you know, or, or Spider-Man and Wolverine and Captain America, Iron Man. It's like Magic, Nico, like what a cast. Like I'm so excited for this game. I know the gameplay style is not most people's typical style of gameplay. I'm a little worried about the card based system, but then when I saw their live stream this week, it looks like there are still moves you can do even if you run out of cards. So at least that means that there's options for strategy and stuff, even without cards in your deck until your deck gets reloaded. So that's great. It looks like they're putting a lot of effort and thought into how this game plays, not trying to make it just like XCOM, but adding in new elements. And and he even said in the, the live stream, he's like, if we tried to make XCOM with Marvel characters, it wouldn't have worked because there are some stipulations and things that we need to work on. Like Nico, for example, if you don't know that character from Run Runways, uh, Runaways, she actually has this power where she has a staff and it's the staff of one. So she can cast anything one time. So if she says like, you know, light Loki on fire, I guess she can only like Loki on fire one time. She could probably like other people on fire. Maybe that's the loophole. She can say, okay, now light Wolverine on fire and light, you know, uh, Venom on fire. She could probably do that, but, um, but, only one time so if she's like you know summon rain that's the only time she can summon rain so in the game though you're using cards and you're reusing them and reusing them so for nico that poses a problem with the lore of her character so they found a way story-wise to kind of work around that and still make her part of the game but still give her a uniqueness too that makes her different from other characters um so i liked all that i was like hey that's fantastic that's that's really cool that they actually put that thought into it into these characters and knowing their lore from the comic books um, but also like willing to play with that lore a little bit because obviously this is a, a multiverse story it's a story set in another world uh, where things happen differently so yeah anyway i could go on all day about this game i'm so excited so let me know what your thoughts are i had to make this a venom vlog episode because obviously venom's part of it um, but we've done like highway to hell episodes that have now been merged into seek and destroy episodes We've been following this game and covering as much news as possible ever since they announced it, and I'm so happy. In fact, uh, Ryan Stegman was the first artist to draw these characters uh, from comic book style because we've seen CG renders of them and stuff. But, you know, Ryan Stegman was like the first person to put official artwork out there of the original uh, characters when they first got announced on that Game Informer magazine. Now we got a new image right here on screen of the four new characters from the DLC. So it's cool to see Ryan draw Venom again, but also in this new look with the black and gold looks so awesome so you heard my thoughts let me know yours down below and as always we'll continue the conversation down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and while ace itches his butt i bid you adieu see you in the future peace